In this video, sponsored by the brand new Snarling Badger Studios merch store, we're going to learn how to speed paint with some goblins. Everyone wants their miniatures done quickly when they're trying to get them onto the tabletop for play. Display painting, that kind of thing, totally different story. But for tabletop, generally you want them done quickly. You, of course, want to play with them sooner versus later, you know, but, but sometimes your painting speed isn't as quick as you'd like, and there are a few reasons for that. One big reason is planning. In, in the following video here, you'll see me paint uh, four goblins in an hour and 15 minutes, not including drying time and all that kind of stuff, which, you know, honestly, when you're painting, you have drying time, you can use that time to work on other models you might have there on your table while you wait, or you can work on something completely else. I don't know. You, you, you could go touch grass, whatever. But I was able to get them done that quickly, hour and 15 minutes for goblins because of planning, mainly planning my colors. For this type of speed painting, planning is key. Poor planning is the thief of time. It, that sounds like a famous quote, but I don't know if it is. It probably is. But it's true, though. In this video, you'll see me use the same color on two or three or four models at a time. I'll use it on this one's pouch, and then I'll use it on this one's pants, and then this one's cowl or whatever. And that speeds things along via, like, assembly line painting. And it also helps tie the models together as a group, you know, color-wise, which is frequently a good look. The other reason I was able to get these done pretty quickly is because of quality, or frankly, a lack thereof. If, if you need a group of figures done really quickly, you have to properly weigh time against finished quality and make a determination of which is more important to you in this situation. Remember, you can always go back later and highlight and add details and all that if you want, but if you need them quickly for an upcoming game or an event or whatever, don't focus so hard on quality, we can still make them look pretty good. So I'm going to speed paint these tiny little goblins, three of which uh, I picked up at Gen Con 2022 from a company called Next Level Miniatures. This is not sponsored or anything, but I picked them up from the booth. Uh, and the Archer model is actually a kit bash of an Oathmark uh, plastic goblin infantry body and his arms and whatnot and all that kind of stuff. And then a GW 40K Gretchen head, which I don't know, it was kind of a fun little thing. Anyway, the first step to planning on this type of paint job is doing a black and white Xenophil Prime. It helps to speed things up immensely in the next steps. You can use an airbrush like I did if you want to, or you could use a rattle can, or even just a simple dry brush. I made a video about it quite some time ago. Pachow. You know, so watch that if you haven't already to get yourself ready for the next step. Goblins are generally green in my mind, but not like a really bright green. You know what I mean? So I use Citadel Contrast uh, paint. It's called uh, Militarum Green is the color to give them more of like a frog-like kind of green versus like a comic book green. You know what I mean? And, and then I try to catch all the different skin parts that are showing on the little critters. And uh, spoiler, I, I do miss some. That will come later. Uh, but the contrast over the Zenithal Faded Prime adds in, like, blends and makes the skin look better right off the bat than just putting, you know, straight contrast paint over a simple white primer. Now, as part of my planning, I've found some pieces of clothing on two of the goblins that I want to be red. So I break out the Blood Angels contrast paint, which is a, a really deep red, uh, and I paint those parts, the face thing and uh, some of the sleeves or whatever on the wizardy guy. And uh, again, like opening a pot once, using the color on several of the models in the group, and then closing up and putting it away once really helps to speed things along as opposed to constantly opening a pot, using it, and then getting to the next guy and going, oh, I got to open that pot again and all that kind of stuff. It's again, we're, we're talking speed painting. Everyone's boots are going to be snakebite leather. Now you might think, well, that's kind of dull. You know, I mean, like I would think that it would be more interesting if each goblin had like specific and bespoke footwear, you know, and maybe sure, but are, are, you, are you trying to get the models done and on the table or are you trying to become some sort of goblin fashion designer? That's, I guess, the more important question. No one's usually looking at a goblin's shoes, you know, and I'm pretty sure that honestly, the goblins don't really care either. So, you know, snakebite leather. And while you have the snakebite leather out, you can also use it on some pouches too. It's, it's great on pouches. Now at this point, some contrast black Templar on all of the parts that will be metal. It's always good to put like black underneath silver, 
you know, before you paint the silver on there. So if you miss any spots, if the primer is real light underneath there, then you don't have white shadows where the parts you missed, like in the little nooks and crannies when you paint that silver. And we're going to put the, the silver on kind of roughly. But so just take my word for it. Put Black Templar on all the parts you want to be metal. Now, this means in this situation, the archer's chain mail, right? Uh, everyone who's got little daggers and blades and all the stuff like that. Also, our sneaky rogue goblin is going to get some black clothes as well because, you know, he's a sneaky rogue goblin. It wouldn't make sense for him to be in white. A few of these goblins have wooden shafts, like a spear and I think possibly some sort of magical staff. And, and those need to be done in a single layer of wildwood contrast. It works really great as a base for dark wood. And if there is some wood grain actually modeled into the spear, then just a simple dry brush of some kind of mid-brown later will pop that grain out and make it look even better, if you have the time. And here comes another brownish color, Agaros Dunes. This will be great as the upper parts of our goblin boots, our fancy footwear, uh, like the flap that flaps over at the top of the boots. It works great for up there and will also work really well on some pouches as well. Following a theme, we'll use another brownish contrast paint, Skeleton Horde, and we'll use it on our archer's kind of main garment, uh, you know, and, and whatever the heck the spearman is wearing you know, above the waist. It's sometimes, especially on very small characters like these goblins, specific details can be kind of like a little hard to suss out. So generally what I do is, especially if it's something for tabletop, I just cover it all in contrast and let it go. Speed painting. Uh, also, uh, I used it on the wizard's lower cloak too, and I think it looks, you know, pretty goblin-y. Our stabby rogue goblin needs more dark colors. So I'm using Contrast shyish purple on his hood. It's a real, real dark purple, but as long as I don't put on two layers of it onto the model, some of the purple should still come through and not just look black, because otherwise shyish purple can, it can sometimes come out too dark. At this point, I start going back and finding things that I missed on my initial pass. It's, it's a part of bad planning in this situation. I missed painting some black on some things that'll need to be metal later. Um, I missed uh, some skin parts, like some ears and stuff like that on a couple of the little guys. And, you know, they were sticking out of their hood or whatever. Getting these things right the first time would have saved me more time because I'm not having to go back and open up the pot again and go through all that stuff and blah, blah, blah. But there's certain things that sometimes you just need to go back and fix. Then I used Talisar Blue contrast paint on the wizard's orb at the end of his staff, as one does. And then... As everything dries, it's time to start mixing my special recipe. In certain situations, when you want everything to look like really grungy, you just cover everything in a dark wash, Agrax or shade, you know, oil, depending on what you want to do, right? However, sometimes that doesn't work. I kind of talked about this just recently uh, in a video, Pachow, and here I wanted some wash, but not too much. So I started mixing. I mixed three drops of the new Agrax Earthshade, the, the contrast-based formulation, not, not the old stuff in the taller bottles, and then 10 drops of technical contrast medium, and then I mixed it all together in a little cup that I had and tested it on my thumbnail to make sure that it wasn't too dark. Then I took like a big, like number four brush and just started slopping it onto the models. I'm doing this to add a bit of overall brown to the models, right? And then like darker brown in the crevices and the recesses to pop the details a bit and all and you know and to tie the overall model together. Should I make a video about my recipes? Let me know in the comments below. I've been uh, doing a lot of experimenting with uh, different wash recipes to find out what works in best situations and what I like to use. You'll notice that there's some spots on these models that I didn't paint before this step. They're just the bare Zenithal Prime. That's because I want those parts to be like an off-white or very, very light brown. And putting the wash over them will make them that color pretty quickly. Plus, it'll go into the crevices and do all the other kind of little wash things. But it's not too dark. And then that way, I don't have to paint them twice. Like, putting the wash on over the top of the primer like that in spots that I want to just be like a light brown saves me a step of painting them the kind of light brown first and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. Again, planning is key. After that wash step dries and it will take a while it's then time to make the metal parts metal with uh, the vallejo model metallic air silver that i'm such a big fan of like the spearheads uh, the arrowheads uh, daggers all that kind of stuff 
uh, whatnot. It, it painting, you know, kind of roughly, like not perfectly covering everything. Uh, because that if you if you if you do that, it makes the weapons look a little bit more distressed and gobliny, leaving some of the black to show through, right? Also, our archer has like a chainmail vest thing, which I assume he stole off a dead body somewhere or whatever. But uh, so what we do is we take a simple streaky kind of dry brush of silver over the top to make it look, you know, you guessed it, gobliny. And then we take some of the old null oil over the metals to kind of darken them up and not let them pop too much because that Vallejo model metallic air silver is pretty bright and goblins generally aren't known for polishing things too much. If you're speed painting models like other than goblins or kobolds or whatever, then you might skip this dark wash and make the swords and stuff like that look a little bit more polished. It's totally up to you. And at this point, I'll call them done. I still need to finish the bases and such and the rims and whatnot. And, you know, but the actual painting, what makes the figures look good on the table is all done. Like I could continue along and add a bit of highlighting here and there and lighter green on the tops of their noses and cheeks and the tops of their ears and all that. I could paint the eyes and the teeth on the ones with the bigger teeth and the other ones have got really tiny teeth. But I'm in an hour and 15 minutes at this point. And uh, I, I honestly was trying to get it all done in an hour for all four goblins, so this will have to do for now. And that's the best thing about speed painting. You can always go back and make them better later. These models, I'll be honest, don't look great, but I got them done really quickly. If I had given myself more time, maybe even like two hours, right, I could have made them look even better. Or I could take these to the game shop and use them and they'll be fine. And on some rainy day in the future, if I'm bored, I can come back out to these and, and start touching them up. I hope this makes you think about ways to add speed painting techniques to your painting workflow. Because if you're a tabletop painter like me, getting more models on the tabletop sooner is generally better. If you liked this video, hitting the like button helps to get the content out to more hobbyists and it helps the channel. We hit 5,000 plus likes last time, which is awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, if you'd like to see some more, also be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. The time has finally come. Vince and I have finally launched the merch store for Snarling Badger Studios. You got your Rain in Hell shirts. You got your uh, Space Station Zero shirts. You want some of that awesome Space Station Zero artwork on a garment that covers up your, your, your torso and whatnot. Boom, we got that. We also got... Um, mugs and tumblers and there's going to be more stuff added very soon hats um there's also just shirts uh, designs with just the snarling badger logo on there if you want to go down that road as well so if you go to shop.snarlingbadger.com or you just go to the snarling badger website and click on merch up at the top either way or if you go down in, into the description below you'll find it there as well you can get yourself some um, amazing, I think, because the artists that we pick are amazing. Some amazing uh, designs uh, that you could wear on shirts. And I hope I see you at uh, Adepticon wearing them.